Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers recap and analysis of the Pittsburgh Steelers Week 2 loss to the New England Patriots 17-14 at home. A lot to talk about, let's discuss what led to the loss. Starting with the elephant in the room, the Pittsburgh Steelers offense, which has scored just two touchdowns in two games and 30 points on offense over the first two games. And so that is so hard to win in the NFL, even with a good or even great defense to average, you know, what they're averaging right now, 23 points in overtime with a pick six at their back and then 14 points today, one of those being a touchdown, needing a two point conversion to eventually get to 14 just not good enough, and for a defense that is, is is a very good Steelers defense, but not elite and certainly hurting now that T.J. Watt is out of the lineup until about Halloween, it's just not a recipe overall for success. I think the first on offense was pretty poor in this game. Really forced Pittsburgh to use safe calls on second down, a lot of boots and rollouts and things like that just to try to get in third manageable. I mean, the third down offense in this game overall was good, but really kind of faded more. Second half, you get two, three and outs late in that game uh, when Pittsburgh had a chance to to potentially tie or take the lead. So that obviously not good enough there. Mitch Trubisky struggled overall in this game, whether that's taking sacks. It, it did feel like he missed some reads. The interception that he had his first of the year uh, was a really bad play, trying to force a, a pass where it shouldn't have gone in a good uh, pass defense from linebacker Mac Wilson. So yeah, overall, just not what you want to see out of Mitch Trubisky in this game. Um, no, he will not be benched. He will be the starter in week three for Thursday night against the Browns. Short week on the road, hostile environment. I promise you, Kenny Pickett's not going to start this game, but Trubisky certainly has to be better going forward overall. There's no question about that. This run game was a bit better than I guess what it was in week one, but still not enough consistent plays, not enough uh, splash plays, trying to stay on schedule. That was an issue Run blocking better, but again, is it good enough? Probably not. And frankly, Pittsburgh didn't start getting some decent runs until the Patriots lost some of their best run stuffers, whether that's, you know, linebacker, safety, Kyle Duggar, Juwan Bentley, their big thumping linebacker, missing time. That really felt like the only time Pittsburgh gained traction in terms of the run game um, in this game. Overall, Harris, I thought, played well, looked relatively healthy, certainly did well on that touchdown drive that uh, Pittsburgh had, but Overall, uh, this offense just not good enough, obviously, where it sits today. Defensively, Pittsburgh was solid in the sense that if you allow only 17 points, you're going to win most of those games. Unfortunately, this offense, the way that it's struggling, that's not even a guarantee at this point. Um, obviously, the pass rush really felt non-existent, and that was the overall probably biggest takeaway I have in this game. After sacking Joe Burrow seven times, 11 quarterback hits in the opener with TJ Watt for most of that game, just three quarterback hits and zero sacks on Mac Jones in this one. Forced Pittsburgh to blitz more, which dictated their coverage a bit more. Um, you know, obviously the guys on the four-man rush did not do a great job. I'm pretty sure the Patriots were able to have more attention put towards Cam Hayward. One reason why he was really quiet overall in this game after being dominant in week one against a rookie, faced a rookie left guard this week, but I'm guessing there was a lot of help and slide protection to Hayward's side. I'll check that when I go back and watch the tape. But in spite of all that, again, you hold them to 17 points. You did win some possession downs. You had kind of a bend but don't break mentality overall for most of the game. The interception by Mika Fitzpatrick was an incredible play call. I'll, I'll break that one down on Steelers Depot tomorrow. Please check that out. I cannot wait. Even in a loss, we usually kind of focus on something negative. I really can't wait to, to illustrate what Pittsburgh did uh, on that uh, Minka Fitzpatrick interception, an incredible coffeehouse stun from Alex Highsmith to get free. It was a play on a blitz they ran last week that we talked about in their cover two defense, and Minka can just cover the entire field. He path comes over to the middle. Great play by him. He's got as many interceptions this year as he did all of last year. So again, overall, um, run defense, Wayne late. Pittsburgh probably got kind of tired. They tried to do some different things to compensate for not having Watt. 3-3-5 three, three, defense pretty heavily used in this game, but the Lack of pass. So it's very similar to what the Bengals game, I think week three last year when Watt and Highsmith were both out and they just couldn't even get close to Joe Burrow. Didn't have to wash his jersey after the game. Mac Jones, similar sentiment today. So really feeling the obvious loss of TJ Watt, but the domino effect of how that changes and dictates your coverage, your blitzes, what you can do, and obviously what pressure does against the against quarterback. And then what happens if you can't pressure a quarterback and you saw on one of the big plays there, the 
uh, Moss or Nelson Aguilar over Keller Witherspoon. Great clean pocket for Mac Jones. Obviously, Witherspoon in good position, has to play that ball better, just never leaves his feet. Aguilar becomes the big man there, and that just can't happen. Witherspoon, Witherspoon is a 6-2, and he's got to be able to make that play. Special teams, Boswell, fantastic, kicking 50-yarders at Acrisure Stadium. Hard to do. Nick Folk pushed one uh, wide right. Boswell, money from 50-plus, about the only kicker that can you know consistently hit from that distance in Pittsburgh. Obviously, his home stadium, so he knows it better than anybody else, but still just don't take that stuff for granted. Harvin had a couple of really nice punts, 69-yarder, I think a 53-yarder that was really well positioned. The net was pretty poor on that one, though, unfortunately. Did have a 39-yarder in the second half that was uh, not good for a field-flipping opportunity. And then, obviously, Gunnar Olszewski muffing that punt against his former team, the Patriots. Uh, a really back-breaking moment there. It's, what, a 10-6 game. New England recovers. They punch it in. They go up 17-6. to And Pittsburgh's trying to play catch-up the rest of the way. And so that was a big key mistake by Olszewski. That cannot happen again. Number one job of a return, man. Number one. It's not score touchdowns. It's not create big plays. It is take care of the football. Show great ball security. Big mistake and a costly one for Olszewski. So that will wrap up today's video. Short week for the Steelers on the road for week three at Cleveland, a Thursday night game. The Browns coming off a last second, I believe, loss to the Jets. Don't know the whole context of that one, but the Jets rallied and, and won that game by a point. So both teams will be pretty hungry as they are both 1-1 one one on the year and a chance for Pittsburgh to crucially go 2-0 and in the North. And so that'd be a really good start and get the sour taste of the week two out of their mouths. And they'll get that chance pretty quickly here Thursday night. So let me know your thoughts and reaction to the week two loss in the comments below. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. A lot of, a lot of recap and action here on Steelers Depot and on this channel in the coming days. So again, appreciate you guys watching and we'll talk to you soon.